What's up you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Siki. So for today's video, we're gonna jump right into it. I know normally in my videos, I don't say my name. Like I just be going right into the video, but I wanted to like say hello and tell you my name. My name is Siki, hi. Anyways, so for today's video, it's a good one, okay? This is the encouragement that you probably need or that you will need in the future. So watch this video, like it's gonna feed your faith. So a couple, no, not a couple days ago. Yesterday, I was going to the gym and the Lord whispers to me, faith will fix it. I write it down because, because right before then I was cleaning up and the, and the Lord had been, had been talking to me about a couple things. And so I was like, I need to write these things down so I can follow up later on, right? And so he tells me faith will fix it. I write it down. As I'm writing it down, he, I start to write and I know it's the Holy Spirit reminding me of things where faith has fixed certain situations, okay? Today, I get on YouTube, and Diani Neves, her video comes up in my feed, and it's basically about last hour attacks, specifically like mental attacks, and attacks in your feelings and emotions, okay? And so I watched the video, and I'm like, oh man, faith will fix it. Like, that's the first thing, I'm like, faith will fix it, because she's like, I was feeling defeated, I was feeling depressed, and I'm like, mm-hmm. Faith will fix that. She also watched the, watched the video because in the video she gives you good insight. She, she, she gives you encouragement, some instruction, and she tells you of your weapons, one of them being worship, okay? And she just really like encourages you. So watch that video. I'll put the link in the description. Now the reason why I'm making this video is because as I'm watching her video, the Lord is like, you need to make your video. In this season, you guys, a lot of you guys are on the brink of breakthrough. Like you're really, really close. And the enemy is going to try to partner with you to get you to speak against what God has already done for you. The enemy knows that your blessings, your breakthrough, your restoration, those things are set for an appointed time. He's fully aware of that, right? He knows that you are the one that struggles in your faith, okay? So because he knows that he is gonna to try to attack your mind, he's going to try to attack your, um, your feelings and your emotions so that you open your mouth and you speak against what God is doing. He has no authority over you. You are the one with spiritual authority over yourself, right? That's you. So if you are saying you believe God one moment and then the next moment you are prophesying against what he's doing, so be it, okay? Now, I'm gonna tell you guys a teeny story about how I dealt with this. Last, a couple weeks ago, the Lord led me to pray for some people. I was like, okay, cool, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. Then he says he wants me to say something to one person, which ended up being a word for a lot of people, right? So I'm like, okay, bet. Now at this point, I'm like, okay, bet. So, um, so that led us to like do a consecration, do a fast, you know, a couple of things to, to get our faith where it needed to be, right? So I get to a, I get into a position where I receive a really, really big blessing, like a really, really big one. And I, compl I didn't expect it at all because I've been praying for other people. So I'm like, okay, cool, yay. And I get this big blessing. As soon as I receive this blessing, now for some people, this would not look like a big blessing. This would look like encouragement. But I knew this was a blessing because I knew of what went into me having, me being able to receive this blessing. And I'm sorry I'm being cryptic, but I can't tell my business yet because I can't tell my business yet. It may not have looked like a big blessing to some people, but I understood this was a big blessing for me. Like this is a big deal. And so I'm happy about this blessing for I want to say all of 15 to 45 minutes. To be honest, it's kind of really sad and depressing. And immediately after, I deal with a serious mental attack. Like, and it took me completely off guard. I was like, and it took me, I wanna say a good 12 hours to fully understand that I was under attack, okay? Now, the reason why this is a big deal is because I was under attack for about I wanna say like 12 to 15 hours, like mentally, I would try to pray, I could feel like I couldn't pray. I was trying to worship, I felt like I couldn't worship. I just felt defeated, I felt depressed, I felt like I wanted to cry. At one point I felt like, why am I even doing all this? Let's just give up, like, it was bad. So I'm feeling frustrated and I know, I know if I keep pushing through, it's gonna, it has to let up, right? It has to. But at the same time, I'm frustrated. So I start talking crazy. I start talking 
crazy. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to give up. What's the point of all this? I'm talking like really crazy. And I started calling myself names. Um, I just really like for a good grip of time. I want to say for a good two days even. I was talking crazy. Now, I have a full revelation of the power of my words. I know I carry weight in the spirit. I know that my words move quick. So I'm talking crazy and I'm because I'm emotional, I let the enemy tell me how to speak over me. How crazy is that? I'm like, what? So then the Lord brings to my remembrance recently where he had told some, where he had led me to ask someone for prayer, right? And he led me to ask this person for prayer and this person was saying like a bunch of things and I'm writing everything down and I remember he covered one of the things that I was dealing with in the moment, okay? And so, um, yeah, basically, he had given me the word that I needed to get through the attack. I didn't do my due diligence and follow up with God, right? I didn't do my due diligence and just be quiet when I was dealing with this attack. I didn't take a minute to go to God and say, God, what's going on? I just kind of felt what I felt, got upset, got depressed, and ran with it. I didn't persist in the spirit. And right now, this is persist season. Everybody is talking, well not everybody, but I can tell a lot of people are dealing with mental attacks, right? You're dealing with feeling, with feeling defeated. You're starting to question if you even heard God. Like, was I tripping? Like, am I just nuts? You know, do I even hear from the Lord? Yeah, you do. The thing is that that thing is coming and it's coming quickly. And the enemy would not be the enemy if he just lets you have it, right? He is not going to look at you ascending and elevating and getting what you've been praying for, what you've been fasting for. He isn't just going to sit back and be like, okay, bet. I'm happy that she chose better. No, he is going to wage war against what God is doing in your life because he wants his team to win. And you're a part of God's team. So in this season, you have got to have faith. You have got to have steadfast faith. If God has been talking to you about your kingdom spouse, right? The person that you are destined to marry. And you're looking around and you're like, what kingdom spouse? What husband? What wife? Like, what are you talking about, Lord? I'm literally so single, right? I'm not interested in anyone around me. I don't know what's going on, right? I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how it looks to you. It doesn't matter how it looks to you. It doesn't matter how it feels to you. All that matters is what God has said and what you are saying in agreement with the Father or what you are saying to prophesy against what he has said to you, okay? You have to have the faith to believe God. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a quick little story. So, um, so Tiffany Montgomery released a video called I don't remember, but I'll put the link in the description. It was like last month. And she was talking about how basically her BD kidnapped her daughter. And it was like a big deal. And if you know, if, if you guys don't know, when a parent kidnaps a child, even if they don't have custody, they can end up keeping that kid. Like if they go over state lines, like like the police will not fight on the on the rightful parents' behalf. It can be like a big deal. And there are a lot of instances where a parent has kidnapped their their child from, uh, from from the other parent who has sole custody and they end up keeping this child until the kid is like 18 they ruin the relationship between the child and their rightful caregiver right like i've read about that i've heard about that i've seen movies on it i know people that have dealt with it right i yeah so last year what led me to cover back by god was that tiffany montgomery shared a testimony about how her bd basically kidnapped her child and she got her kid back in like seven days. I wanna say seven days, I think it was seven days. But that's really, really fast. I had met a girl in 2021 who went through the exact same situation. It took her four years to get her child back. She was the sole, she, she had sole custody. Her BD took her kid from her. It took her four years to get her baby back, crazy. Now, in that video, watch the video, it's so good, it's gonna, encourage you because that's a that's an attack now that's an attack someone kidnapping your kid i ain't even got kids but your baby what anyways so 
In the video, she says that she made a decision to believe God. Like she's like, my, the first thing was that I chose to believe God. And my host, and I took notes when I was watching that video. And it says step one, decide to believe God, right? I'm telling you guys lately, I have been reading over that and I'm like, I believe God, this is gonna happen. I believe God, that's gonna happen. I believe God. And I tell myself, I believe God. It doesn't matter how I feel. I speak out loud that I believe God. I choose to believe God no matter what. And so basically what the enemy is trying to get a lot of y'all to do is he's trying to get you guys not to believe God and she's trying to get y'all in a place where you are just like, I guess I just heard wrong. Or maybe I don't hear God at all, right? And who you're around in this season is everything because you need friends, you need teachers and leaders and pastors and parents that are gonna say, no, but God said this. That's what you need. You don't need to be around any anyone that's gonna say, okay, well maybe you did hear God wrong. Maybe you were wrong. No, you weren't. You heard God right? You heard God. And the only way you can make a decision to believe God is if you are hearing from God. If you are doing all of this, if you're praying, if you're fasting, if you're reading your word, if you're doing all, if you're watching, you know, content like this on YouTube and you are not hearing from God, we have a problem. Okay. We have a serious problem. We need to be praying because what's going on? Like you should be hearing from your father. He did not do all of this he didn't do all this to not speak to you. What are you talking about? Like, no. So you need to be hearing from God. The thing is that a lot of people are struggling to believe God because they're struggling to hear God. They're struggling to hear God because God has told you something. He gave you some sort of instruction. He gave you, um, he told you something and maybe you didn't want to hear it, right? Like I was in a position recently where um, the Lord told me to do something and I just did not want to do it. I had, I had a bad dream and he told me to ask a specific person for prayer. And I was like, I don't want to do that, Lord. I don't like people knowing my business, Father. Like, I, why can't I just ask the same people I always ask for prayer, you know? And he was like, you can't ask me who to ask for prayer and then not ask them. And I'm just like, okay. So I texted them and asked them for prayer and they ended up giving me a lot of encouragement, a lot of insight. And I realized like, it's so important. Like if God is telling you to do something, do it. Because here's the thing, it is not God's will for us to get caught off guard the way we get caught off guard. Yes, there are surprises here and there, but the majority of the time, the Lord wants us to be on guard. He wants us to be able to fight things in the realm of the spirit, but because we're not good stewards of his instruction, right? He'll tell us to do something and we make it an option. We miss out on divine instruction that we need. So like the person that the Lord led me to ask for prayer, he's told me a lot of good things. Like he's like a lot of encouraging things. He gave me a lot of insight, but I paid, only paid attention to one thing. And then before I knew it, I was in a position where one of the things that he had spoken, I needed, I like, I, I, I had just, I had missed it. I had missed it. I hadn't been a good steward of it. So you need to be making sure that you're asking God about the people that you are around. You're asking God about hearing him. If God has said something, that is it. Period. End of discussion. Okay. And secondly, guys, your faith is going to be what fixes this thing. Your faith is going to be what makes it what makes it on earth as it is in heaven, right? You have seen your wedding. You have seen your breakthroughs. You have seen, you know, your ideas come to life, right? You have seen divine setups, right? But because you don't see it in the earth, you're like, "Oh, it's not gonna, it, it isn't going to happen." Why would you need faith if you saw it on the earth? Why would you need faith? You wouldn't need faith. Okay? Also, guys, a while ago, the Lord told me to do something. Once again, I didn't want to do it. But he said, go ahead and do it. And you decide when you're going to get that breakthrough. I have been praying to God about something. He said, do X, Y, and Z. I didn't want to do it. And he, I, I literally wrote this down. He said, you decide when you want this breakthrough. Some of y'all, your breakthrough's already here. You're just literally being so disobedient. You're delaying your own breakthrough. Crazy, right? You're going through, you're going through mental turmoil. 
you feel it all defeated, all depressed, all sad. God forgot about me. No, sweetie, you forgot about you. Because you're, you're because you're being disobedient. Okay, you have got to obey God. O, uh, obedience and faith go hand in hand. You need faith to obey God, and you need faith to hear God when He's instructing you on what to do. So. This is not negotiable, okay? During this time of mental attacks, right? During this time of attacks, the enemy is going to use people that he has access to. He may not have access to you specifically or in a way that is dire. Like he may only be able to influence a thought here or there, but he may have a lot more access to your friends. He may have a lot more access to your family, okay? Um, so seek God on how to respond to those things. Seek God on when to remove yourself from something entirely. He may have access to your coworkers. And this time, ask God for, for your spiritual eyes to be open so you can see an attack for what it is. It's just the enemy trying to shake your faith. Satan is jealous of you because you're the one that has access to God's, to God's mercy. And Satan is also keenly aware that because we have access to God's mercy, where we have missed God, where we have disobeyed God in some instances, not in all, where we haven't, where we've prayed half-hearted prayers, God's mercy is literally going to speak up for us. God's mercy is going to cover us. God's mercy is going to connect us with destiny helpers, right? God's mercy is going to save us from certain attacks. God's mercy is going to be what binds us to our kingdom spouse. It's only going to be by God's mercy. The enemy is going to try to attack your mind and he'll be like, well, you didn't do this fast completely. You um, you were listening to secular music or you did that. No, that's okay. You, as long as you repented and God forgave you, right? That's it. So this is not the time for you to be entertaining any type of, you know, thoughts about going back on God. This is not the time. Okay, God is serious about you. He's for real about you. He did not play about the words that he has released over your mind. So in this season, believe God. In this season, be brave enough to believe that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. He cannot go back on his word. Okay, also in this season, worship, 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 worship. A while ago, my, my mom is a veterinarian, okay? And she had a patient who came in, patient had heat stroke, literally dying. When a dog has a heat stroke, it's over. Your dog's probably gonna die, sorry. Um, so dog comes in, you know, t just baked to a crisp, like brain is fried, RIP, right? No, because my mom texted me and she's like, pray for this dog, I'm so sad. I have to euthanize her because she had heat stroke, right? And so I'm like, uh-uh. You pray for her. You lay your hands and you pray and you believe that God is going to heal this dog and that God is going to use this as a testimony of his power and of his mercy and of his just goodness because he doesn't have to heal dogs. You know what I mean? And I'm like, lay your hands on her and believe God, right? The reason why, the, the reason why my faith was on 10 like that is because I was fasting at the time. So my faith is through the roof. All I've been doing was worshiping, reading the word, and praying. So my faith is literally like at an all-time high. So I tell my mom, I'm like, no, I'm not praying, you pray, right? And I'm like, I'm like, I sent her some scriptures and I said, lay your hands and pray these scriptures, right? I said, this is God. Ask God, she was like, her brain is literally fried. I said, okay, ask God to give her a whole new brain. He's God, like, come on. So then she prayed and tell me why that evening, that evening, my mom was like, bro, that dog woke up and she's, you know, in intensive care still, but she's alive. Like, I did not see this coming. And I was like, did you lay hands? Did, did, did you believe that God was, was, was going to heal her? She's like, yeah. So then I see this dog about a week later. You would never even know that that dog had been baked to a crisp. Okay. I believe that the Lord allow us to have that experience, right? So that I could be on 10 for the rest of the year. Cause why would God heal a random dog? Or he heal a random dog just to heal a random dog? No, he's healing the dog to feed our faith, okay? 
All I did was believe God. All I did was put a demand on my mom to put a demand on heaven, right? So in this season, not only like, yes, you need people like that and you need to have some scriptures to pray. When you pray the scriptures, it hits different. It hits different. Why? Because angels have to hearken to the word of God. Why? Because the Lord can't go back on his word. When you read God's word, it feeds your faith in a different way. Believe God. Like, believe God. Worship, okay? Um, I said I said that story to say since I have been worshiping so much, I felt very close to the Lord. I, I felt like I just knew, like I know, I know for a fact he knows no limits, right? And that's how you need to be. You need to be in a position where you know that you know that you know God has no limits. God has never, ever failed you. God has never, you know, been casual about you, right? Even when you were in sin, God was not casual about you. God was not indifferent towards you. He didn't look at the things that concerned you as something that are, that, that's, tri that that's trivial. He's always been 10 toes down for you. He's the same God that said, oh man, these humans messed up. Okay, bet. let me send the human version of myself down to earth to atone for the sin of everybody else. Like he's that same God. He's the same God that told the sea, eh, eh, you stop right there, okay? He's that kind of God. Get in God's presence, get in God's word, remind yourself of who God is, and then as you feel defeated, Put a demand on heaven. And also, guys, if you feel defeated, if you feel depressed, if you feel like, you know, be quiet. How do we worship? We open our mouths. We, we say, God, you're amazing. God, you're this. God, you're that. We exalt God with our mouths. When you are going through it, right, when you're feeling de defeated, when you're feeling depressed, don't open your mouth. Why? Because you don't want to exalt what the enemy is trying to do within you. You don't want to exalt that. Keep it to yourself. And once you're settled, pray for the peace that surpasses all understanding. Okay, so in Philippians 4, 6, it says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now, in the message version of that scripture, I really like it. It says, don't worry or fret. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness. Everything coming together for good will come and sell you down. It's wonderful what, what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life, okay? So let your worries, let your concerns, let your fears, right? You can talk about these things in your heart to your father, but shape those things into prayer points, right? If you are believing God for marriage and you're looking around and you don't see anybody, be like, God, thank you so much that you picked the best of the best for me. Like, thank you so much for the absolute most beautiful man of God. Like, thank you so much for a man that's humble. Thank you so much for a man that is faithful to you. Thank you so much for a man that's afraid of you. Thank you so much for a man that's generous. Thank you so much for a man that's fine. Thank you so much for a man that's funny. You know what I mean? Like, say that kind of stuff. Say that, if you you know what I mean? Don't let, don't, don't be walking around like, I don't see anybody, you know? I don't, I don't know how this is even gonna happen. I don't, I don't understand the details. Who cares about the details? If anything, it's probably for the best that you don't get it because you probably do something to mess it up anyway. So let, leave the details to the Lord and you focus on doing your part and that is giving God your faith, okay? Lastly, last night Nathaniel Basie went live. He was talking about, um, he was talking about, I don't remember. I got, I caught on to the end of it, but he said, insist. This time last year during Tiffany Montgomery's marriage fast, she put out a word called insist. Okay. So you already know about to say insist, insist. It doesn't matter how it looks. Okay, stand on word. Like when I feel like, God, what are you doing? I go back to the words of those that I know to be true prophets, true teachers of God. If you are watching things that are suspect, if you're dealing with people that aren't of God, of course, don't take that back to the Lord. But um, when I know someone is in God and I know someone is devoted to the Father, I will take back the words that He gave them. And I'll be like, look, God, 
your prophetess Tiffany Montgomery said, look, Lord, your uh, minstrel and psalmist Nathaniel Basie said, and I'll, and I'll hold the Lord to the words he's given them. Right? Because why would he give it them those words to release to me and I can't take it back to him in prayer? No. So you need to insist. Okay? You insist. You, you tell God beyond the, beyond the shadow of a doubt, God, I believe you. And also, if you're watching this and you're like, you know, I'm not dealing with any attacks right now. I'm easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Like, I don't have any problems. Cheers. Cheers to that. But be on alert. Baby, be on alert because the enemy walks around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So sometimes God will send us words, he'll send us knowledge. He will lead us to someone to pray for us. And in our ignorance, right, we will neglect the game he's putting us on. You know what I mean? Like right now, he could very well be putting you on game about an attack that's in the works, okay? He could very well be doing that. Um, lastly, for real this time, the enemy is going to use people that are close to you. Sometimes not in your, like not like your close friends or your family, but he will use people that are close to you in your vicinity. Don't let these things upset you, okay? Don't let these things frustrate you. If anything, be flattered because that means that the enemy can't use you against you. He can't use your friends and family against you. He had to go to some random Tom, Dick, or Harry to try to get him to play with you. So in those instances, respond well. Ask for the spirit of peace to be with you and respond well. This season, you're gonna deal with some attacks. Just know it's the enemy's last ditch effort. He's trying to see, is there any way I can shake this girl's faith? Is there any way I can mess with this brother right here? Is What can I do? Come, he doesn't have a lot of tools. So all he's trying to do is do something to get you off your post. He's trying to do something to frustrate you, okay? And you should be so happy and so honored that the good thing, the promises of God are so close that he's trying to attack you nonstop. Take those things and count them as joy because he is trying to really set, set, set you off guard because what God has coming for you is so big. Also, also, and this is actually the last thing I'm going to say, maybe, remember, as you elevate in the spirit and on the earth, you're going to have new levels of warfare there are going to be new devils so take these these um these trials take the attacks take that type of warfare as training for the next season okay when you are going through it in the name of jesus that's what i sometimes i just say in the name of jesus as all you can do is speak jesus to a thing all right someone is tripping around you pray for their peace Seriously, the Lord uses the foolish things to confound the wise. So in your frustration, if someone is pissing you off, if someone is trying to play you, pray for their peace. If you are feeling uh, frustrated, angry, fearful, start dancing around in your room and, and saying, Oh, G Jesus, I love you so much. Just dance around in your room. I'm telling y'all, there is something about dancing and singing before your father where the windows of heaven literally open up and the, the answers that you need, the, those prayers that you need, the gift that you've been waiting to be manifested within you in a different way, the anointing that you need to get through certain things, right there but you have to release it you have to keep your mind stayed on god and the best way to do that is just to be a kid go to god and be like god i'm just a girl god, i'm just i'm just a girl god i'm just a kid like i don't know what's going on i have what i still don't have a full revelation of how taxes work lord because how am i paying taxes and then i'm taxed on everything else and I don't, I don't get it. How, why, why is nothing free if I'm still paying taxes? Seriously, that's how you go to God. Go to God like a kid. If you're just a kid, you're just a girl. Put a demand on heaven for God's promises to happen. Dispatch your angels. Hey, angels who are assigned to my marriage. Go get this, man. I don't know what he's got going on. And ask God. Oh, last thing for real. As you're waiting for these promises to come to pass. Ask God how you need to be praying. Ask God how you need to be praying. If you are waiting for your husband, God, how do I need to be covering this man in prayer? He may give you something very, very specific. He may put you in a position where you have a lot of insight on how you can pray for him and on how you can cover him, right? Um, 
if you're waiting for an opportunity, like maybe you're like me and you're a performer and you're waiting for that big break, God, what is some material I need to be working on? Okay, how do I need to be practicing? Because guess what? God is, going to t God is going to show you exactly how to prepare for that audition. Your agent's going to call you up and you're going to be like, oh yeah, I'm ready. I can do that. You get to the audition. People think that you have some kind of in. No, I do have an in. I do have an in, but it's not an earthly one. Thank you. So just ask God, ask God, ask God, ask God. This season is called Ask God and Go. Ask God and Do. And if you're in a position where you feel as though you're not hearing from the Lord, then that is a good sign that you probably do hear from him, but he may have spoken something to you and because either what and you either weren't obedient or you didn't receive it. So he may have said some, he may have said something to you that um that like you're like, oh well, I don't wanna I don't believe that. Or he may have told you to do something that you don't want to do. He may have told you to release a word over someone that you don't feel and you don't feel comfortable doing it. I encourage you just to obey God. I encourage you just to obey God. I encourage you to know that God's ways are above our ways and his thoughts are above our thoughts. So it really doesn't matter what you believe or what you understand. Just do what God tells you to do and you will see how God literally sets you up both in the spirit and in the natural, okay? So go ahead and take this word back to the Lord because you know, I could be crazy. I could be a nutcase. Um, I could be a liar. Take this word back to the Lord and then ask God how you need to be praying in this season. And then when you get your testimony, go ahead and comment down below because I want to see and I want to get excited with you. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.